this is Peggy Ann Salts. This is the Next With series powered by Verb, where we're talking with the leading brands, leading marketers, leading minds in marketing. And I'm excited because I have as my guest, Monty Weber, your senior agency lead at LinkedIn. First of all, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Even better, a real chance to dive in what B2B marketing brand performance looks like. I mean, what is a good B2B experience? Good B2B experience is like authentic, natural content. We see a lot of great advertising in B2C these days. Yeah. For the last decades. Yes. But you always see uh, a reluctant in doing humorful, uh, engaging content on B2B. It's always about you have to have a proof point in it. So it ends up being a very boring creative in the end, right? Yeah. Or general communication. It's fact-based. And you need these things because, you know, there are a lot of people involved in the decision in B2B yeah. rather than in B2C. But that doesn't mean that it cannot be engaging. Yeah. So we do see a lot of great content out there these days uh, because companies are now really leaning into uh, yeah. it and really seeing the benefit of doing different kinds of communication on our platform or generally across the B2B space. So really happy that this is a evolution in what we're seeing in the B2B space today. But to your point, it was about thought leadership, but now we're understanding that, you know, buyers and professionals are people. They're people too. Exactly. So how is LinkedIn evolving to make this possible to have thoughtful content because we expect thought leadership. I mean, this will be on LinkedIn as well. It Hopefully. has to be, absolutely. <laughs> it couldn't exist without that, but what are you doing to make it engaging, yeah. but also effective and efficient because we want to see that it has impact. Right. You know, it, it moves us. Yeah. Also, of course, efficient when it comes to measurement and spent. Well, you always have to have a proof point in the end. Is exactly. it effective, right? Yeah. So what we have seen for the last years on our platform is uh, a lot of companies were coming on our platform. They were building their new hub on the platform to just have a space to communicate about the values, the benefits, their products. Mm -hmm. But we do see that people follow people. They also follow companies yeah. because you always expect, okay, if the company is posting something, it must be advertising. That's the beauty about LinkedIn. Now we introduced Thought Leader Ads. And Thought Leader Ads, they integrate seamlessly into our feed. We call it sponsored content. And sponsor content is not oblivious as advertising. It's advertising, obviously. Uh -huh. But it, the sender is a human person. So in that case, it would be Ola Kalinios, the CEO of Mercedes. He will be posting something about why he loves the new product launch or behind the scenes of the last commercial that they shot. And we see, because of the authenticity, it creates more engagement and thus more reach. Mm -hmm. And thus it becomes more effective and efficient in later on doesn't mean that company pages become obsolete. We create brighter, more bigger canvases with more enriching and engaging content on these pages too. Uh -huh. And we see a shift now that more executives, and doesn't always need to be an executive, could also yeah. be Peggy or Monty, Definitely. who's posting regularly on the platform yeah. for the company. So this is what we're seeing, that people are engaging on our platform, people are following more people, and they really turn into the platform and lean into it to get first first party data from or information from, from the company and the people. And how, what is the measurement? What is the KPI of success? Because before it was just like reach, but I think there's gonna be more of an impact to look at and measure as well. How are you approaching right. that? So if you think about measurement in general, everything has been created around B2C. Yes. You have marketing mix modelings, which were created for B2C. You have measurement solutions, generally uh, revenue attribution, for example. Everything has been created with B2C in mind. And yes. B2C, we all know the buying journey, the decision journey is yeah. always different. So it's our duty as LinkedIn, as one of the leading platforms for B2B in the world, mm. to rethink on how we want to approach B2B measurement. So. In the last couple of years, we really started investing heavily into measurement solutions. We now introduced revenue attribution. We do marketing mixed modeling. We have uh, measurement maturity indexes for our clients that, to understand 
where they sit in the space. Yeah. But we also want to make it more accessible for the brands to use it so they can really see the impact of each creative. And uh, it starts from the top funnel um, measurement solutions that you have, like brand lift studies. They're all integrated in the platform, all the way down to the funnel. And you talked about reach. Reach is an important factor. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Clicks are also important. But they want somehow. conversion and sales at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly. They want yes. conversions. They want to see what's the... Yeah the business impact, and we can provide that today already. And that's yeah. a huge evolution in the space. Personal brand is also brand. So that brand performance discussion and debate, that brand form is, if you will, that takes on a whole different dimension and dynamic on LinkedIn. How is it that you're seeing companies balance that, you know, brand performance and personal brand? Because now they need an authentic voice and a strong brand. Yeah. So there's a shift happening, actually. Yeah. So we talked about this earlier when we met, right? We talked about B2B yeah. needs to be fact-based, need to be... Yes. Um, it's less about the brand because it's convincing people why they should buy this $300,000 product from this company, right? right. So it used to be very um, performance-driven and uh, we heard a lot about how it's very expensive to advertise on our platform, but they never really looked at the brand impact. So now we are seeing a shift from performance. It's still relevant and super yeah. important for clients, obviously, but we now see a shift more towards brand. So I would say it used to be 70% uh, performance-based advertising on our platform, 30% brand. We now see a shift to 60, even 70% brands advertising wow. into brand. Oh. And the rest will follow automatically. Yes. Right? I mean, these are, these are investments. I have to see it. it has to be reinforced. Mm -hmm. See it several times. See some influences or thought leaders. Right. All of that builds together. And, and brand, brand matters in B2B probably more than B2C. We can afford to be disloyal in B2C. Yeah. But B2B is a, is, is a commitment. If you think about a buying decision journey, it involves probably more than 11 people within a company. So okay. it's, it's a complex target audience that you're trying to convince. Yes. And if you think about a product, if you build a machine that costs $300,000 or euros, you don't do that decision lightly. So this is a decision that needs to be, that takes a long time. We talk about six months uh, cycles. So brand plays a vital role in that sense to constantly remind people about the benefits about the product to talk about the uh, the values that the brand offers. Yeah. So that's something that is happening right now. And I'm mean, glad that companies actually recognize it and do a shift here. Since you're looking at revenue, you're looking at uplift, you're looking at metrics that really matter, what type of range can I, can I expect as a company advertising on your platform through these sponsored, you know, really informative marketing and advertising that makes it really worthwhile, but can you give me an idea of the uplift for what a brand or marketer can expect? So for brands, we see brand uplifts, it really always depends how complex yeah. the product is, how well known the brand is, obviously. So there's not a single answer. I would always suggest if brands start advertising on our platform, we do have brand lift studies. Yeah, take, adva exciting. take advantage of brand lift studies. They are free of charge. There's a minimum investment behind it, uh -huh. but it's reasonable. And if you really want to understand the impact and you want to have fast results in terms of not relying on Nielsen to wait six months to understand how, how much uh, impact your campaign drove, then start using uh, brand lift studies. And if you want to look further down the funnel, start really looking into API integrations. There are a lot of great partners that we work with who offer plugin solutions um, or you can use our built-in solutions like revenue attribution. And with those APIs, I would imagine, I can also sharpen my targeting. Absolutely, yeah. Think about all the uh, possibilities that you have when you have your CRM data directly exactly. integrated and matched with our firmographic data. We have very unique data that no other platform offers mm -hmm. with our firmographic data. So matching these two together and being really able to pinpoint down your specific audience that you want to do to upsell, to cross-sell, yeah. to convince. 
So that's something I um, highly encourage everyone to use. If it's cross-sell and upsell, you bring that up, that's always a source of incremental value and revenue that people forget. It's like, oh, I'm going to have a sales conversion. No, cross-sell, upsell, that is also extremely important and deepens the engagement. Absolutely. I'm engaging on LinkedIn, but I'm engaging elsewhere. You know, I could be anywhere out here in the world of brands. Help me understand how you're bringing that together with other channels or opportunities because there are emerging channels that are exciting. Yep. Out of home, CTV, we're hearing about all of them. And the winners are those that orchestrate. How is LinkedIn orchestrating to create a comprehensive, really immersive, compelling B2B experience? Everyone knows our platform. Everyone yeah. knows our platform. But we do recognize that we create limited space when we only talk about LinkedIn. So what we've done two years ago, we launched our LinkedIn audience network uh, and we're expanding that constantly. So LinkedIn audience network offers the same uh, creative solutions and targeting solutions that you are used to on our platform. Yeah. And now we are bringing this across the entire web. So we partner with high quality uh, apps and websites, and you can see oh. uh, our our ads across the web, basically. So that's one sp step that we took a while back. Now we're uh, exploring our solutions with uh, same targeting solutions with CTV. That's being rolled out as we speak. So, and if you talk to brands and agencies, yeah. they're all about that. You know, they want to have the same uh, options that you have with LinkedIn across other platforms and channels. Absolutely. So that's something. And then obviously we have the integration with Microsoft. We, we belong to Microsoft. So there are a lot of things that will come in yeah. the near future. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a white space that we have and we really want to transform the B2B landscape as we know it today, whether it be measurement, advertising or brands. That's the exciting part. It is a new landscape. We haven't really brought that together. As you said, you're bringing it together over the various channels. Um, what is the approach that you would recommend to brands and marketers to take advantage of this? Maybe that they're not already doing already because maybe they're seeing it in a narrow focus or they're seeing it too broadly, but there are ways to get the most out of your platform. What is, right. what are some of them? With AI, we, we've started integrating AI deeply into our campaign manager. That's the tool that our brands use to run their advertising on our platform. We do recognize though that a lot of brands don't have the resources or agencies in place. It doesn't even need to be an agency. They just simply don't have the resources yes. to run effective campaigns. So we want to make it as easy and approachable and accessible as possible. So now we have built in AI and instead of using two hours to create a campaign, you can now do it with a simple, a simple five minute prompt. Everything is done. You have your budget set, you have your target group set and you just press, okay, I'm fine with it, and then it rolls out your campaign. So that's super easy. But I also want to touch on a, a, on a different topic, which is the over-reliance on third party. We yeah. see a lot of tightening around data regulations. Yes. And we are very fortunate that we have very unique data sets, our first party data, and this will be key for success in the future. And I would really urge everyone to look into first party data strategies mm -hmm. and really start looking into platforms like ours on how we can bring better effectiveness in the near future because there will be a point in time yes. where third party data becomes obsolete. It's cut. So just really start mm -hmm. using momentum and uh, test and learn as soon as you can. One point I wanted to follow up on that I thought was fascinating as you were talking about working with the publishers, high quality publishers. And I think that's a key point here because up until now, it's been more about quantity than necessarily quality. Yeah. So the internet of high quality publishers, what do these publishers have in common? Is there something that is special about this part of the internet as opposed to the complete internet? Okay, so again, this is my personal opinion, but I believe that we are creatures of our habits, right? Yes. So we turn to platforms that we know that we can trust. Yes. And you do have your set of pages on the white net 
yeah. that you would usually turn to to get your news, Absolutely. whatever it is that you were seeking, right? Yes. So I believe that they will always play a vital role. But we do see a shift that a lot of these external sites, and there must be a reason for it, but they are bringing more content to platforms like ours yes. to uh, make it probably also accessible. I believe this is a space that is so worth exploring and we're looking into it. We have, we just recently launched a, we call it the WIRE program. So we have a lot of trusted, um, high quality partners like the Guardians and you yeah. name it. So they post content on our platform, video content, for example. Yes. And the WIRE program allows uh, these, these publishers to earn additional money. So we have basically pre-rolls before their high quality content. So that's the wire program that we introduced lately. Very exciting, very smart too, because yeah. you want to be where the audience is. Yeah. And the audience is in LinkedIn for the professional community, but also now when we're thinking about, well, how do I reinvent myself for my job? You know, we all have to move and, and this is where it happens. Exactly. So it's very smart to yeah. put good publishers in front of audiences that have an appetite for that content. And they're on, on the platform anyway. So it's really about creating richer, yeah. deeper content yeah. that helps them drive more engagement on their content, right? So Monty, you must feel like you're leading a charge here. Very transformative what you're doing. So I've been in the, uh, in the industry for more than 20 years. I've been on agency side for the most of my life, of my career. I work on some of the most spectacular brands in the world. And um, obviously that helped me really you know, grow in my career, but at some point I always fancied going into tech. Okay. And there are only a certain amount of platforms that I trust that I use mm -hmm. and LinkedIn is on top of that. And yes. I must say we're fortunate. We're riding a wave right now. Yeah. And, um, we're really disrupting the space as we know it. And there's so much great stuff that will come to you in the coming months and years. So LinkedIn, is definitely I'm excited. the place I'm, to be to be. I am really excited. Now, I've always, always used LinkedIn and I've built that up as my own personal platform because I just love 16, the content. Followers. Yes, well, Amazing. there you go. But I loved it from the start just because the content has substance and right. meaning, but now it will be measurable, reach will be there, and advertorial won't be boring. That will be so exciting. We'll be yeah. talking about creativity in B2B marketing next time we meet, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure too. So I'm really looking forward to our next conversation. Absolutely, Martin. May I? Thanks, Peggy. Thank you. And keep that game strong on LinkedIn. Uh, you're kidding? <laughs> Absolutely.